Hi guys, this will be our last part for our G, uh, for our endocrinology. This is gonna be your miscellaneous hormones produced by your renal gland, uh, renal renal organ, and your and your gastrointestinal tract. So basically, iraranda na lang natin yung mga most important hormones na dapat yung malaman, and then we'll just identify the function and all. Kasi nga hindi naman siya dotong din discuss. Pero kasi nga for sa renal na part. Pwede nyo siyang ma-encounter yung mga renal hormones, pwede nyo siyang ma-encounter like your EPO, sa HEMA, and those mga disorders. So, doon na nyo siyang madidiscuss. But for the sake of discussing everything, at least you have the idea of these hormones. Let's start with your kidneys. So, our kidney, in addition to the numerous excretory and regulatory functions, the kidney has an endocrine functions as well. The kidneys synthesize your renin. Kanipo, ulit, ulit natin din discuss yung renin, your EPO, your vitamin D3, and your prostaglandins. So your renin is produced by your justa glomerular cells of your renal medulla, stimulated by a low fluid volume or blood pressure, which catalyzes the synthesis of your angiotensin by the cleavage of your circulating plasma, precursor angiotensinogen. Again, ulit-ulitin na lang natin to guys, kasi nga, kung paulit-ulit natin itong gini-discuss, no need to study na, kasi nga, memorize na natin to. Review lang natin yung RAAS system, ha? Yung renin, pag mababa ang blood pressure, mababa din ang fluid volume. Anong nangyayari? Renin, marirelease sa kidney. Anong trabaho ni renin? Pupunta sa liver, kasi nagpresecrete ng angiotensinogen, i-convert ang angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Ang angiotensin 1 will be converted by your ACE na mula sa ating line, nagmula sa ating lungs, converting 1 to 2. Your angiotensin 2 will cause now your vasoconstriction so that there will be increased blood pressure and it will cause now simulate your adrenal gland to produce your aldosterone. Anong trabaho ng aldosterone po ulit, ulit Increase sodium, decrease potassium. Where sodium glows, water follows. In short, there will be water reabsorption. Ayan, memorize na natin yan. Alam na natin yung renin na yan po ulit, ulit. Next, it's also your kidney is also responsible for the production of your EPO or your erythropoietin. So, you will encounter this in your HEMA class. It is a single chain polypeptide produced by the cells close to your proximal tubules. It will stimulate your erythrocyte production and increase the oxygen carrying. Stimulated by hypoxia, produces increased serum concentrations within two hours. So, in chronic renal insufficiency, your EPO production is significantly reduced. Anong nangyayari po, Dok? Pag meron kang anemia, mababa ang RBC concentration. So, in short, mababa din ang oxygen capa carrying capacity ng ating dugo. Decreased tissue oxygenation. And that will stimulate your kidney to secrete your EPO. Your EPO, in return, will increase your production of your red blood cells so that there will be normal RBC concentration. So that's a basic function of your EPO. What else? Your vitamin D3. When we reach your calcium homeostasis, siguro sa mga uh, last parts of ating midterm, we will go back again with your calcium homeostasis. Remember your, sabi ko dati, yung parathyroid hormone, your calcitonin, and then your vitamin D3. Doon ko i-discuss ng maganda yung calcium homeostasis. But for the sake of discussion, your kidney is responsible for the conversion of your inactive form vitamin D to its active form 125-dihydroxyvitamin D3. This form of vitamin D is one of the three major hormones that determines your phosphate and your calcium balance and bone calcification in the human body. So your kidney is responsible for the formation of active vitamin D3. Guys, it's a very wrong notion pag sinasabi nila na ah, magpapainit tayo kasi vitamin D ang araw. Of course, hindi yan ganyan. Hindi naman yung sun ang vitamin D. Anong kinukuha natin sa sun is simply your UV light. Yung UV light will convert your 7-dehydrocholesterol. Yung 7-dehydrocholesterol is nasa ating balat. And when you are exposed to the sun, then it will convert your 7-dehydrocholesterol to colicalciferol. Your colicalciferol will go to the liver undergoing hydroxylation. So the first hydroxylation happens in your liver. So this is now your 25-hydroxylation. Kaya nagiging 25-hydroxyvitamin D3. But this vitamin D3 is still inactive. It will now go 
to the kidney to undergo a second form of hydroxylation. This is now your 1-alpha hydroxylation. It now becomes your 125-dihydroxy vitamin D2. Kaya dihydroxy, dihydroxy kasi nga two times na nagaganap ang hydroxylation. Una sa liver, then pangalawa sa kidney which is the active form of your vitamin D3. So with this, we will go back again pag nakareach na tayo ng calcium homeostasis. At least swerte ako kasi nga, ako din naman magdi-discuss nun. So nakakorelate ko lang yung subject. And ako rin ata ang magdi-discuss ng phosphate. So lahat ng mga remaining subjects ko, at least nakakorelate ko, relate ko lang sa mga other na topics na nadi-discuss ko. And lastly, your kidney is responsible for the formation for the formation of your prostaglandin. So it is a cyclic fatty acid formed from the arachidonic acid. It increases your renal blood flow, sodium and water excretion, and your renin release. Acts to oppose your renal vasoconstriction due to your angiotensin and your norepinephrine. So your prostaglandin is a pro-inflammatory, meaning magkukos ng vasodilation. Kasi ang action niya, i-oppose niya ang vasoconstriction. Siya naman magbabaso magbabasodilate. Kaya nga, nagbibigay tayo ng anti-inflammatory. Kasi si prostaglandin is pro-inflammatory. Pag nagbigay tayo ng anti-inflammatory, magkakaroon na ng vasoconstriction. And lastly, we have different gastrointestinal hormones na i-discuss. So we'll just simply run down and discuss its own important functions. So according to Gaiton, there is only five official GI hormones. Hi, salamat. At least lima lang ang ating i-discuss. It's gonna be your gastrin, your CK, your secretin, your glucose-dependent insulinotrophic peptide, and your mutilin. So let's first discuss your gastrin. So for us to discuss the gastric hormones, i-discuss natin based on what is the trigger, the source, and the action. So gastrin. Anong trigger ni gastrin? Pag meron kang protein and amino acid. Especially the amino acid, phenylalanine, tryptophan, and methionine. And also, triggers kung merong gastric dis distension. So, pag may protein and amino acid, masisikrit si gastrin. Anong trabaho ni gastrin? Si gastrin ay magsistimulate ng parietal cells in fundus for HCL secretion for growth of gastric mucosa. So the source of your gastrin is the G cells of the antrum of your stomach. So from the name itself, gastrin, letter G. G cells of your stomach, which is the antrum. An antrum. So doc, bakit ba natin kailangan masikrit ang HCL? Kasi the purpose of secreting your HCL is simply to convert your pepsinogen to pepsin. And this pepsin will catalyze or will digest your pepsin protein. So, siya na yung magdadigest ng ating protein into its simpler forms para ma-reabsorb ng ating katawan. So, basically, your GI hormones is essential for digestion para ma-reabsorb ang, ma ang pagkain sa ating katawan. That's the basic function of your gastrin. So, tingnan natin sa diagram. Ito, gastrin. Stimulated ang gastrin pag merong gastric Distension, pag busog ka or merong protein sa ating chan. Anong nangyayari? Ang gastrin is stimulate niya yung, yung parietal cells sa fundus to secrete your acid, your HCL. Your HCL in turns will stimulate your pepsinogen to become pepsin. Then your pepsin will digest now your protein and amino acid for absorption. Next. CCK, your CCK or your colleagues cystokinin, the trigger is all types of food, pero the main trigger is your fatty acid. The source is your eye cells in your duodenum. So, anong action niya? Bile secretion. There will be gallbladder contraction. Diba, remember, yung bile natin, nas nasustore sa ating gallbladder. So, kailangan niya i-contract, i-contract niya yung ating bile, ang yung ating gallbladder, para lumabas ang bile secretion. There will also be relaxation of your sphincter. Then, increases your gastro, gastric emptying time, decreases your gastric, increases your gastric emptying time, decreasing your gastric emptying. Anong ibig sabihin niya, Dok? 
pag sinabi natin increases your gastric emptying time, meaning papatagalin natin yung 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 pagkain sa ating chan. Hindi natin siya hindi natin siya agad-agad na ida ipapadala sa other parts ng organ kasi nga kailangan natin siyang i-digest ng mabuti. Remember, the main trigger is fatty acid. So, kailangan nating maraming oras para mas ma-digest ang ating fatty acid. It also increases your pancreatic enzyme secretion. Again, let's go back here. CCK. Punta tayo sa dudenum, yung CCK. Cholecystokinin. Anong trabaho ni cholecystokinin? There will be bile secretion. So, yung magko-contract yung gallbladder kasi nasustore yung bile sa ating gallbladder. Pag na-contract ang gallbladder, anong mangyayari? Lalabas ang bile sa ating duodenum. Anong trabaho ni bile? Sim simple. Ang trabaho ni bile is to emulsify your fats. It will emulsify your fats so that your fats will be reabsorbed inside the body. Tapos, ano pang action ng CCK? I-increase niya yung pancreatic enzyme secretion para tutulong sa pag-digest ng ating fatty acid. Diba? Simple lang. So, tatandaan lang natin, review ha, gastrin, isipin natin, HCL secretion para ma-digest ang proteins. CCK, tatandaan natin yung fatty acid. There will be bile secretion para ma-digest yung fatty acid. Now, let's proceed with your secretin. Your secretin, ang trigger na secretin, if may acid sa ating dudenum na galing sa stomach, masisecrete ang ating secretin. Or if there is fatty acid in your dudenum. Anong source ng ating secretin? is the S cells in the duodenum. So, clue word, S cells, secretin. So, the action is to inhibit the HCL secretion. Increases biliary and pancreatic bicarbonate and this hormone does not affect your pancreatic enzyme secretion. Doc, bakit ba natin kailangan i-inhibit yung HCL secretion? Remember, nandito tayo sa duodenum, right? Pag nakadating na yung HCL sa ating duodenum na galing sa ating stomach, matitrigger na masisikrit si secretin. Kasi nga, ayaw natin ng acidic na dudenum. Kasi ma-inactivate ma yung mga biliary and pancreatic hormones. So, pag ma-inactivate ma sila, hindi na sila gagana. So, the main purpose of your secretin is simply to inhibit your ACL secretion so that your bile, your pancreatic hormones will take effect. Diba? Simple lang. Secretin anti-HCL. Yan yung gusto kong tandaan nyo. Now, let's have your GIP or your glucose-dependent insulinotrophic peptide. Anong trigger? Oral glucose. Source, K-cells in the duodenum. Anong action niya, Doc? Stimulates your insulin secretion. It inhibits your gastric emptying. So, stimulates your insulin sec secretion. So, kung nasa duodenum ka, mataas ang oral glucose, syempre, lalabas yung insulin na galing sa pancreas. Anong trabaho ni insulin? Is to reabsorb your glucose. So, very simple. That's it. And lastly, alright, thank God, this is last night yun talaga, guys. So, your methylene, it triggers your fasting. At anong triggers ng methylene? Is actually your fasting. So, the source is the M cells. So, for, for, from the first name itself, M cells in the duodenum and jejunum. Anong action niya? It activates your interdigestive and migrating myeloelectric complex and it only acts to your stomach and your small intestine. So, pag ka, kailangan mo ng mutilin to activate your interdigestive para it will increase your appetite para ikaw ay kakain. So, let's review again. Your gastrin, isipin natin, memorize na natin na gastrin. Anong kay kay gastrin? Anong word na dapat natin tandain? Gastrin is pro-HCL secretion para ma-digest ang ating amino acid. CCK, kailangan, ang clue word natin dyan is fatty acid. CCK is will be secreted para ma-emulsify ang fats. Ang secretin, kalaban niya ang HCL para makapag-act ang action, makapag, uh, action ang ating pancreatic and biliary. Kasi nga, pag acidic ang, ang dudeno, hindi na mag -e effect yung biliary and pancreatic hormone. What else? Your GIP, it is pro-insulin. So, magsistimulate yung insulin pag marami ang oral glucose. And lastly, if you have, if you are undergoing fasting, your methylene will be, will be stimulated for you to ingest food. So, that's it. That's a wrap. 
I know guys na it's very overwhelming. Ang daming memorizing, ang daming concept na dapat malaman. But guys, I know it's gonna be worth it. Trust me, trust the process. Sobrang daming aaralin. Just a reminder now, we don't study just to pass the exam or just to pass the quiz, but we study because we want to inspire our patient and we want to make a change for our future patient. Make a change in their lives for our future patient. So with that, I officially end our endocrinology topic. This is the end part of our endocrinology. Tapos na tayo sa endocrinology. And I officially welcome you to toxicology. So for the entire midterm and finals, we will now be discussing all about toxic, all about toxicology. For me guys, mas interesting ang toxicology compared sa endocrinology kasi hindi kasi to common. And I have um, a unique cases na na-encounter na ko sa SPMC because meron silang uh, certain department doon na toxic, uh, SPMC toxic departments, specialty sa IM. IM na toxic na part. So with that, we officially end your endoc endocrinology and we will begin again with your toxicology topic next meeting. You know guys, sobrang dami yung aaralin today but it's gonna be worth it. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope may natutunan kayo sa akin and please if you have problem understanding for any part of my discussion, do not hesitate to PM me. It's better to us. I really appreciate the students na nag-ask. Konti lang talaga yung nag-ask sa akin. And sometimes yung mga tinatanong nila is yun yung mga nilalabas ko sa exam para a bonus point, bonus point for them na kasi nagtatanong sila. So please ask me a question. If, you're, if you understand my discussion or you don't understand, please PM me anytime. So God bless you everyone. Good luck and happy aral.